here. I'm really excited. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge where we stand, Cavi 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 country, uh, such an amazing land that we get to share. Um, I feel really honored to be standing on this land. Um, second, I want to thank the Nusa Regional Gallery and Michael, their ongoing support with the magazine for the advertising um, and for the event as well, help us being here. It's super important to have people like Michael in this um, bit of, of Sunshine Coast. Um, I'm especially excited because I think of him uh, as someone that is keen to do changes. Um, this is my <laughs> view. Um, he's kind of unapologetic. My English is really bad, yeah, you know. Uh, and I'm always intrigued on what he's going to propose. He's, he's strong what he always brings. It's not something that we are usually easy to, like, not easy, but like that we are used to. And he brings new stuff. He's always looking for new artists, emerging artists. So as the shelter and part of the shelter team, for us, it's really important to bring um, well, you know, like established artists as himself as well. He's an artist, and I would love then to you to share a little bit of your own art, um, and you know, and mix the established and the emerging ones. Uh, I think is the key, and I think art shouldn't be only for one side of society. Is what heals us the most. Is what brings us together the most. So that's it, my introduction. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> thank you, Michael, for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me, and thank you for such a, um, a glowing and gushing introduction. <laughs> yeah. A pan rock. I feel you like you're a little bit of a pan rock. I would, I would love to see you as you when you were young, if you were a little. Were probably, you pan rock? Probably just a bit like this, but less grey hair. <laughs> really. <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about floating land as well, which is exciting for the Nusa Regional Gallery. It's another year of, is what year? This third? Uh, this is the 12th iteration of floating land. Oh, wow. Well, so, 12th. yeah, I've been involved in the last two, so my third okay. one. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is your third one. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. I Googled you yesterday. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, and I saw that you actually have so many solo shows. Uh, Michael came from Melbourne. Um, he was a curator in the Bayside, yep, saying, briefly, Bayside yeah, Gallery. Yeah. Mm, I did my research. Excellent. Um, <laughs> and I remember, I was here when you were coming here to the Nusa Regional Gallery, and I remember that there was excitement in the air, you know? Like, and I would love to, for something new, for someone coming from Melbourne, everyone was like, oh my God, like everyone <laughs> proud that you were coming to the gallery. Um, so I would love to know how your side of that was yeah, coming yeah. to here. Um, I didn't know too much about Noosa, so it was a bit of a leap of faith. Um, I'd, the first time I'd ever stayed in Noosa was the night of my interview, um, but I'd been kind of day trips before from Brisbane and that sort of thing. But yeah, I kind of grew up in Melbourne and um, after going to art school was really kind of involved in artist run spaces in Melbourne, um, which is why I kind of am always attracted to projects like this and the stuff that Shelter does and spaces like Lantana and all those sorts of spaces, um, the space, the old lockup and Inari and those sorts of things because I think they're really exciting, interesting spaces where there's not as kind of strict parameters, not as strict rules and you can experiment more and all the um, new and, and interesting things come out of those spaces. So yeah, my background is as an artist first. I went to art school straight out of um, high school dotted around a couple of artist-run spaces in Melbourne and then my wife and I started our own one in, in Footscray in the Inner West mm. back about 100 years ago, it feels like. <laughs> um, it was called Trocadero Art Space and we kind of just took over an old building um, in the heart of Footscray. And Footscray, um, no one wanted to kind of live there. When we moved there, it was, um, you know, it was the first place where refugees arrived when they came to mm. Melbourne and Victoria, so it was really culturally diverse and um, 
economically really hard for people as well there's a lot of people with um you know high visibility of people with mental health struggles on the streets and drug issues and things like that um but also a lot of emerging artists coming to this space as well and it was just like this real melting pot of energy that hadn't kind of been gentrified yet in a really exciting place to set up a, an artist run space so we opened a couple of galleries and about a dozen studios and rented those studios out to artists it was a bit of a selfish motivation to begin with because um <laughs> I went to art school at an regional centre in Victoria, a place called Warrnambool, which is about 300 k's out of Melbourne. And I came back to Melbourne and didn't know any artists. I hadn't been to an art school in Melbourne. So, um, you know, it was kind of a challenge for me to, if I wanted to keep making art to try and meet people who were, had the same kind of mindset and the same kind of headspace as me. And so the way we decided to do that was to open a, a gallery and studios and and that would bring them to us rather than us having to seek them out. Mm. And so that happened really quite quickly, I guess. Um, and we, it, Trocadero actually just closed down last year after 17 years of operation, so oh, wow. it went for a long time. Um, I kind of ran it for the first couple of years and then we set up a not-for-profit organisation to take it over nice. when we went and set up another version of it called Shifted on um, the other side of the city in Richmond. and. The rationale behind that was, um, you know, it was one thing for us to have this space where all our friends came and, and hung out together and we'd have openings and we'd all pat each other on the back and look at each other's art. But it was the other side of the city where the people with the money were. And so we found a similar space in a street, a small street, which is about 100 metres long, and it already had six commercial galleries in that street. So we were kind of the the dodgy space at the end of the street and amongst all the wealthy commercial galleries. <coughs> And we operated there for a couple of years and, um, yeah, it was great just kind of giving all our artist friends and, and new artists that we met the opportunity to have their work seen in that kind Amazing. of space. Yeah. Amazing. I actually didn't know that I was going to start going through my CV. But, That's um, okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I saw your CV yesterday. That's why I went, oh, fuck, I didn't know all this. Uh, yeah, you had like eight solo exhibitions. Amazing. Uh, prices. I saw all of this. Um I found it amazing because I didn't know, and usually when you think of council, which is what I'm loving lately of being here as well, and communicating with council is like, you know, as an artist or, you know, you think like, oh, like it's another kind of humans that they are there, and sometimes it's not, so mm. it's good to, you know, like see and, and, and see people like you that maybe put seats on council and kind of and in NUSA, which is like much needed, so. Yeah, it's, uh, that's why I'm excited that you were an artist. Like, I saw all that yesterday, and I'm like, oh, he knows the hustle of being an artist and how to get into the world, you know, like, and all that stuff. So, yeah, I thought it was good to share that first bit of you. Yeah, I think, um, like, I'm turning 47 this year, and my oldest son is turning 13. So working the maths backwards, I suppose, I was about... 33, 34 when I got my first adult paid job kind yeah, of thing, yeah, you know, yeah. until then it had been all crappy jobs and trying to get by yeah. as, a, as a painter and running yeah. these artist run spaces and things like that and, and it worked fine, you know we, yeah. but then when I become responsible for another human, kind of things shifted a little bit yeah, as well, yeah. but I also think, you know it was never my plan to kind of get into curating or, or making exhibitions, which is kind of the more down to earth kind of way to talk about it, I think but I think there's also, I mean, there's probably more than two types of curators, but there's, there's probably two camps that I think about. And there's those who kind of go through university, study art history, have a really kind of academic focus. And they're really, really important people. And they're great for telling the story of art throughout time. And then there's people who, I suppose, like I described, make exhibitions, which come from a, a more hands-on making background. Yeah. And... Uh, I think in that space you're kind of given more permission to be experimental and take risks and make mistakes and mm. um, and so you don't succeed all the time but you know yeah. that's okay too. Yeah, the hustle. And <laughs> as I think you, as you said like I think I think it gives you a an understanding of um, what the person on the other side of that relationship is going through and their perspective and yeah. having been there myself then I think um, I don't know I, I always view those things as collaborations even though I'm not kind of making any work yeah. but I always uh, 
you know, there's probably a couple of people in the room who I've actually said this to in person, so sorry for repeating myself. But I think, you know, I go into making exhibitions with artists with this idea that I've got an idea of what it could look like, they've got an idea of what their work is about and could look like, and we both end up doing something that neither of us would have come up with ourselves. Mm, yeah. And that's yeah, that interesting that to me, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, with the, the floating land um, Biennale, yeah, Biennale. Biennale. <laughs> <laughs> um, was like, you, this is the third one, right? So in the first one that you did and the second one, was what you put your effort, like do you do the, you beginning with the vision with a goal or you, how do you manage to put all that together? Be and you can explain a little bit for the ones that didn't see um, the Biennale, the yeah, Floating well, Land I mean, people who haven't seen Floating Land Biennale are kind of in the same boat that I was in when I did the first one because I didn't know what it was when I started doing it. I had, hadn't heard of it apart from it being in the position description of the job that I applied for. <laughs> yeah. And um, back before I started at Noosa, we didn't really, the gallery didn't really have a, much of a website, certainly didn't kind of archive its exhibition, so there was no real way to do that much research, research about what yeah. it was. Um, and maybe that was a bit lucky as well. I got to go in without any kind of preconceived ideas of what was expected of us. Um, but what I know now is um, started by Kevin Wilson back in 2001, I think, off the top of my head. It was an art in the environment event. And it was, the idea was to place largely sculptural works and heavily ephemeral works, I suppose, out in the natural landscape um, with the idea that they'd have a really light touch and not leave any trace on the landscape at the end of of the event which was like a 16 day event um there were artists 16 days 16 days back Whoa. then yeah um from crossing over three weekends and the two weeks in between with workshops or workshops and stuff no? yeah they had like a big artist camp i think out at boring yeah. point and um they did yeah lots of really cool innovative stuff they brought artists from around the world over here as well and they kind of billeted them and um so the artists got to spend time in the communities it was <clears throat> probably in a time where there wasn't as much kind of regulation as well and, yeah. and uh, you know you could just um, invite artists over being in council and get them to stay at a friend's house or something like that yeah. and that wasn't, wasn't going to raise any red flags um, and it's kind of evolved over the years and it's but at its core it's always been about artworks being situated in the natural environments of Noosa or the the landscapes of Noosa um, without having any permanent and lasting kind of physical impact on those spaces. And so that's what we've kind of carried through and that's what I really tried to embrace with the first one. But also one of the things that I really wanted to do and one of the things that I kind of spoke about in my interview process for the gallery was um, it seemed like what council wanted was to mix up um, the kinds of artists and art practices that were coming through the gallery and coming through floating land. So there was a, a more diverse mix of artists who were working locally and those from further afield. Mm -hmm. And so me coming from Melbourne, the natural thing was to tap all my friends on the shoulder or those people that I'd yeah. worked with over the pre previous 20 years and say, hey, come and do something in floating land. Yeah. And, um, and then I've always, um, you know, I, I've, I've been around for a little while, but I'd certainly don't know everyone who's making art in Melbourne or, or yeah. on the Sunshine Coast either. So I always kind of think, you know, which person that I, I know can I ask to be part of something and that will open up a door to ask someone that I don't know and, yeah, cool. and someone who I've always wanted to work with as well. And I kind of think of, um, not disparagingly, but artists like Domino's in that way, you know, yeah, yeah. you knock one over and it, uh, it yeah, leads like you to the chain. next one and the next one. And yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's kind of the way that I approach exhibitions and floating land and and um yeah you know that first floating land exhibition i was able to eventually reach out to um a japanese artist named masao kabe who was out here years uh, i think it was 30 years ago um for his first residency in noosa and he's gone on to represent japan at the venice biennale and he's collected by mona and all those sorts of things oh, and amazing. so you know to be able to put artists like that next to um younger and emerging artists who are from your local community is really exciting. Yeah, yeah full mm. on. Um, in, are, are you able to talk about this year's one a little bit? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, what so, are you thinking? I mean... And when is it as well? So we've shaken things up quite a bit with Floating Land this year. 
Um, it's going to run for five weeks rather than 16 days. It's running from the 24th of June to the 30th of July. Oh, wow. um, one of the reasons we did that because we, you know, we get feedback from our audiences after each event and people said, oh, they wish they had more time to get around to see everything. Mm -hmm. um, we try and make it available to visitors as well as the residents who are here. So we've timed it so it overlaps both um, school holidays school and, holiday, yeah. and non-school holidays. So it gives everyone an opportunity. And it kicks off at the start of the winter school holidays and runs through to the end of Noosa Alive. So we can say to people, come to Noosa and check out sculptural installations during the day and opera on the beach at night. And, yeah, you know, it's cool. going to be all about arts and culture in yep. Noosa in winter this year. Um, but, yeah, there's, a, there's an artist who's been involved in floating land quite a bit named, named James Muller, and he does a lot of projection-based work. And he said to me a few times um, what he really likes about floating land is no one really knows what it is or what it's about. It kind of, as soon yeah. as you think you've got it pinned down, it, it changes. Yeah. And so I've really embraced that as you know over the last couple and even more so this time um and so <clears throat> i'm probably gonna lose a few friends through the process but we've kind of just curated it um in a really tight way this year rather than going out for expressions of interest from the community we wanted okay. to really give um a, a guernsey to a number of artists who aren't often seen in floating land or haven't been represented in the in it before and so we've kind of directly approached those people and asked them to be part of it, not exclusively as a couple of repeats, but yeah. but there's a lot of new faces in there as well. Um, and it kind of goes to the theme of floating land this year as well, which, you know, it's probably a theme that's always relevant, but I think it's been even more pronounced over the last couple of years. Um, yeah. And we're going with floating land, us and them, and just really looking at this kind of... Um, the divisive dynamics which seem to be really prevalent in society over the last few years, everything yeah. from kind of pandemic segregation um, through to, you know, Black Lives Matter and, um, you know, current debates about, um, you know, trans identity and things like that. Everywhere you look, there seems to be real friction. And so we wanted yeah. to grab that as a, a theme and then use it as a space to... Um, I don't know, maybe agitate a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I read that a little bit and yeah, I felt that. It was that. like, oh, it depends on who reads it and what intention they put into the, that reading causes different... It's really depending on us and them can be so much. Um, so I, when I wrote it, I was like, oof, this is pan rock. It can, <laughs> it can, it. Well, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, we're really privileged to work in the arts that we can do these things and have yeah. these conversations and open up these um, kind of dangerous ideas or uncomfortable conversations and, and it's okay to do that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a hopefully a space to share ideas and to learn from each other. And so while no doubt there's kind of some abrasive elements to the projects that we're doing, um, it's also an opportunity to for those who are open to it to think about what someone other than themselves, what their position is and yeah. and maybe find some common ground as well. So, yeah. you know, it's not all just about causing trouble. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, you know, there might be a little bit of trouble stirred up along the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that about you because I, I noticed that you were a little bit of like... Mm, fire starter in a way for me because one we did an event with michael for floating land the two years ago yep. and he was like okay you can do pretty much you're free to do whatever you want to but this guy needs to be in and it was orlando and he's someone that you know was like oh this is a different type of like not something that you see everywhere, you know, like it causes you, like some people will be like, ah, oh, this is disgusting and stand up and go. And another one will be like, oh, this is so cool. And for me, it was like, fuck yeah, because in Nusa, you're more used to see only one side of things, mm. um, which I reckon most of us here, we are looking for new things as well, or, or the original stuff, First Nation stuff that was here as well and give weight to that as well. And I think that you manage all of that pretty well. You know, like mm. you're always putting some kind of balance between that pan rock of you that I see. <laughs> and then, you know, like also, you know, giving that vision to anyone. It's kind of like, that's why when I read the Us and Them, I was like, wow, this is crazy because the first thing that in my my think is like it pro it's proposing something that is dividing two things but then it instantly makes you think 
where I'm I on us and them, what is us and them artist and non artist, uh, First Nations and not First Nations, you know, like it's a so vast, like women and men. Or mm. it, and I thought it was really interesting. I'm kind of like so keen that you do that pinching. <laughs> <laughs> if you have one, like one battle of your life, like, you know, like uh, for me, it would be to um, be contagious on positive thinking in a way and be courageous and inspire courage and for you if you have to choose one battle what's one your battle. battle oh wow could have done with this question a couple of hours ago to prepare an answer but that's too. okay um <clears throat> i don't know i i like to um you know keep on making spaces where creativity has got got visibility and has a voice I think that's really important because it's way too easy for society to kind of just fall back on things that are practical and things that make money and, um, you know, there's more to life than that, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's cool. a very good answer. No, that's but, cool. Um, that's true. Yeah, you know, that's just, you know, that's I think cool. about it. I've got two young kids and I'm more into the idea of them, um, you know, doing creative projects and making things than getting jobs as bankers or something yeah, which yeah. will set them up for life so yeah yeah, yeah you know if it, i guess if that's what you think for your kids that, that would be also what you like to see more broadly that's cool yeah. that's really cool um let me think if we are missing oh actually i would love to people like for people to ask stuff if you have the courage um yeah like uh, anything that you want to ask for a you know gallery director and curator um, it's really cool and also I encourage the artist around to get to meet him and talk and you know get involved uh, because he's making Nusa grow in a cultural aspect so it's cool to be involved and yeah I don't know encourage <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah you do there is any Um, there's probably a couple of answers to that, I suppose. You know, at council, we've got to have all these poli policies and strategies and guiding documents. Yeah. And so Noosa actually doesn't have a public art policy at the moment, but we're trying to develop one over the next, you know, short period of time so that then but we will have a structure. Mean? So at the moment, people come to us and say, oh, we want public art. And we want to make sure that public art doesn't make our... Um, special part of the world look like every other special part of the world you know there's, there's um, great artists everywhere but if we don't kind of give some thought to how public art makes us different then we all end up with the same big silo paintings that you see throughout regional Australia or the, the same street art or the same plonk art sculptures so I think it's really important that we develop a vision first for the kind of public art we want and what it says about us I'm really keen on the idea of lots of temporary public art, so spaces where that get, kind of get activated and reinvented mm -hmm. time and time again, so the public art doesn't have to be there permanently. But I guess floating land is that as well. Floating land is public art for five weeks and then it disappears again, so everything that we do, um, yeah, will... Yeah, so that would be the... the yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I, I guess I could give an example or two of what float, of the projects that Floating Land is going to be doing this year. Yeah. Um, one project I'm really excited about is um, there's quite a well-established artist named Gosha Voldezak, and I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing her name wrong. Um, she's got Polish background. She's done these, she does these amazing drawing performances where um, usually on windows she, and she's done this at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and all sorts of amazing big galleries. She, I think they're just like Posca pens or something like that, but she, her drawing performances are, she just stands at that window and draws what's going on around her for a couple of days and they're these kind of really big abstract doodles with little bits of realistic imagery which kind of pop out of them and usually all in just one, one colour, just line drawings. Um, she has a collaborator who stands there and talks to the people coming past and kind of is a conduit between the public and her and that kind of, those people feed into the drawing. Um, <clears throat> and so we proposed to her that she could come up and do a, a, a few days of um, these drawing performances, six days. In fact, we're going to do three on the Noosa River and three up in Pomona. Um, but what we proposed was 
um, working with that kind of us and them theme, rather than a fixed window, we could um, fabricate some big perspex uh, COVID era sneeze barriers that could go on some picnic tables that we'll install in those places. So we'll divide these kind of spaces that you usually share with people um, and share food and drink and yeah. nice times outside and we'll just run a big sheet of perspex through the middle so you can't actually talk mm -hmm. but then she'll sit at those and do drawings on those for six days and then they'll sit there as sculptures afterwards so that's one of the kind of projects that we're doing cool. no judgment at all it just kind of draws attention to the space and yeah. and maybe teases out some of the ideas and and um you know the implications of what we've kind of been through a little bit yeah cool yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, and you're still putting all the artists together or it's already said? Like how it's many, roughly, <coughs> how many artists you're putting all together? Um, I think we've got, oh, I don't know. I think there's about 15 to 20 projects all up spread right across okay. Noosa. So we're going into lots of different locations this time. Another one that I'm really excited about, and I suppose with Floating Land, what's really interesting for me is um, that the artworks can't just appear anywhere or they'd be, they, they mean something more because of the location that we choose for them. So they really open up a conversation with that environment or they, again, collaborate with the space. So the, the environment becomes something different because the artworks are there and the artworks, their meaning changes because of, of the history of the space they're in or the way that space is used. So we're working with um, an Iranian photographer named Hoda Afshar, and she's, um, she's actually the head of photography at the Victorian College of the Arts as well. Um, but a few years ago, she did a project called Remain, where she um, did portrait photographs of a, a selection or a handful of men who were detainees on Manus Island. Um, they hadn't been there that long when she took those photos so I think it's uh, I'm not sure how many years it's going back now but they're incredibly powerful photos and we're getting them printed up at a large scale about a meter and a half by 1.2 meters wide or something and having them as freestanding portraits in an installation down in Noosa Woods Bay so you've got these pictures of men in Manus Island um, with the opulent mansions on the Noosa River in the background um, and so that that installation in itself will be pretty amazing. But one of those men um, who's photographed um, his portrait went on to win a number of prizes for Hodder, and that's um, Beirut's Buchani. So uh, for those who might not know Beirut, he won a number of literary prizes a few years back because while he was a, a, a prisoner, I suppose, on Manus Island, um, he wrote a book. Uh, all via text message out of you know, smuggled in mobile phones called No Friends But The Mountains. Um, and it was kind of all about his, his journey um, uh, and the boat that he was on um, capsizing and him being plucked from the ocean and then being detained and then being imprisoned on Manus Island. And you know, it's an incredibly powerful book. Um, at the time... Uh, I think it was Peter Dutton who might have been immigration minister or something like that. He said that um, Beirut would never set foot in Australia because he came what he cla classed as illegally. Um, New Zealand resettled him and he, he's a resident of New Zealand now. Uh, but Beirut was actually in the country over Christmas as well and he made an address to Parliament calling on a, a royal commission for the treatment of asylum seekers and refugees. Um, so... While his portrait is in that photographic series, we'll also be doing a, a Teams in conversation with him. So we'll be installing a big screen down in the Noosa Woods and um, he'll be in conversation with another writer activist, Arnold Zabel, who um, yeah, will be actually here in person. So we'll be inviting everyone to come down to Noosa Woods, see these portraits, listen to Beirut talk about his experiences and, and his writing. And um, yeah, while we think about that with the, the privilege of do a spit in the background, I suppose. Amazing. Yeah. It's exciting. Can't wait to see that. Um, we have to finish now. Thank you to all the artists for being here. I'm so excited to see what's happening now. Um, if you have more questions, reach out to Michael for to see everything about the floating land Vien Viennale. I never said it right. <laughs> um, check on their Instagram. They'll post stuff soon. Uh, thank you for being there and uh, love you. Let's start the battle. Excellent. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.